Hello there, my name is Patrick Goldsley, I'm Voluntary Initiative Manager. I've been a long-term enthusiast of biobeds, so I'm very pleased to be here at Hummer Farm in Dorset with Tim Harris, who's recently installed a, a biobed. Tim, how many hectares are you farming here? On the home farm here, we're farming about 250 hectares. We also have an 80 hectare farm on contract farming. Agreement. Right. And uh, what crops are you growing? Mainly winter wheat. Half the farm's down to winter wheat. Um, with the other quarters are spring uh, beans um, and winter all seed rape. The contract farm is all malting barley. All malting barley. Right. And uh, how often are you having to wash your sprayer out during the year? We'll probably wash the insides out with all clear four times a year. Um, we'll probably wash the outside twice a year. So, Tim, tell us why you decided to put a bio bed in. We were uh, well aware and we've been watching with interest uh, the Scandinavian countries um, and how keen they are on bio beds. Um, and we considered that uh, grain insurance getting ever tighter at some stage will want us to try and reduce point source contamination. Bio beds seem a very good way of doing it. Um, and while there was a grant there, we thought we'd make the most of it. So, that grant was a tipping point for you? Very much so, yes. I think the grant was um, the really the thing that changed it from uh, a pipe dream to something that actually that we were going to do. So let's go and see how Tim has set up his system. So Tim, this is the bunded area that you used to fill in. Just run us through your process, please. Uh, obviously today the sprayer isn't with us. Um, yeah, it's a little bit windy for the sprayer, but the sprayer would normally be parked up um, over there inside the bund. Um, we'll obviously connect the water and the pellet of chemicals will come here from our um, suppliers. We then fill the sprayer um, and the cans, when they're empty, will go onto the drip trays. Um, all the liquid that gets collected from the drip trays goes into the bio beds. We can then wash them down on there as well, and again, that goes into the bio bed. When they've been rinsed, um, they'll then go into the stillage behind me, which again has got a um, mesh floor, and all of um, the liquid that comes out of the cans gets collected in the collection area here and will go through the bio bed as well. Okay, so and the very important thing is this, this concrete lip around, around the edge of the bio bed, which stops any stops other rainwater getting in and yes. also uh, keeps stuff inside in the first place. Yes, correct. Yeah, it's, it's really uh, what's inside the bund will go through the bio bed, anything else won't. Um, so, yeah, the, the bun's a vital part of that. Okay. So, Tim, just explain what happens now. All the liquid we've collected from the bio bed drains down through these drains into the sump here. It's then pumped out with a float switch. Uh, Onto a, into a holding tank on top of the bio bed. Tim, the uh, water comes from the holding tank in the uh, bunded area and is then pumped into another big holding tank, uh, which then just through the gravity uh, feeds these uh, blue alkathene pipes. From that, the, the liquid goes through the bio bed, filters out all the chemicals, breaks them down and into another sump. And then from there, it goes uh, onto a turfed area, a grassed area, where it's just irrigated as, as pretty clean water. Yeah, correct, yes, it's irrigated uh, behind you there, yes. Well, Tim, that looks a really nice system you've got set up there, but obviously the thing in front of mind of most farmers' minds is just how much does it all cost? Um, I think the grant was £3,098, um, and we did go over that. Um, I think one of the biggest surprise costs to us was the electrician's cost to get the pumps wired in. Um, I think that was £700 um, to get it up to code. Um, which seemed a high cost for what we were doing. Um, we also didn't do our own concreting work. We had somebody else to come in and dig the concrete because it was reinforced concrete and to relay the concrete for the bund. Um, so again, that probably cost more than if we could have done that ourselves. Um, but I think it probably cost us in total about three and a half thousand pounds. Right, and the liner you, was, was what was that? The liner I found was a reservoir liner from the internet. Mm. Um, I think from a company um, somewhere considerably north of us, um, but it arrived in uh, on um, DHL the next day. So oh, it was very five hundred pounds or something. Five hundred pounds for that. 500 pounds for that. Yeah. The pumps, um, again, they're just normal twenty, uh, I think twenty mil trash pumps. Um, and the blue alkathene pipe is, is from any local supplier, really. Yeah, dirt cheap. That is the cheap part, yes. yes okay. yeah. But as, as you said right at the start, the grant was an important trigger as to why you did this. Yeah, I, I think without the grant we wouldn't have done it, for certain. Um, I think we'd have always found um, somewhere else to spend £3,500. Shiny so. equipment is always nicer than, than hardware. Yes, probably is. It probably very much so, yes. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Of course, getting, getting regulatory approval for biobeds is a very, very important first step before anyone decides to build a biobed. 
Fortunately, EA and SEPA are well aware of the BioBeg concept and have been actually instrumental in funding some of the research that have gone into uh, proving the BioBeg concept in the UK. So they should be sympathetic to farmers. Um, having said that, not every farm or every situation is suitable for a BioBed, so there will be occasions when it's just not right. I have with me here Roy Hayes, who's Catchment Sensitive Farming Officer for the River Yeo, who's been closely involved in setting up uh, a number of applications in, in, in Somerset where he works. Roy, the EA paperwork, is it quite straightforward? It's quite straightforward, yes, and the, the Environment Agency are looking really just at the risk for uh, local surface water and groundwater, um, and it's a straightforward process. Uh, and it, in this area, working with the Environment Agency has been quite good and instrumental in um, getting some, all the applications been approved. That's great, and the, and the farmer just has to, has to supply map and, and details of that, that what they're going to do in effect. Yes. Yeah, yeah, map and just to say whereabouts they're, they're putting it and whereabouts is going to be the final um, irrigated right. area. But there's been no follow-up EA inspections as well, so far? No, I mean, barry beds in this area, in this catchment is quite new really. Um, we've had two put in last year, before that there wasn't any. Um, so it, no, and in terms of inspection, it, what barry beds are the most um, soundproof really way of dealing with these pesticide washings and um, they're really the kind of um, creme de la creme. That's great. And in terms of the grant process, that, that's fairly straightforward, isn't it? Yes, the grant, grant uh, process, uh, it works as an application window between the 1st of March and the end of April each year. Uh, so it's quite a short period uh, for farmers to apply. Uh, I go out and help farmers with the application forms and uh, we try. they are quite straightforward compared to many other things. And uh, that process uh, would then, it's a two month period, and then the farmers should know by June, and then you'd have the following February to do the work and right. complete it. So there's plenty of time to do it, but the, sometimes it takes a while perhaps for the EA to clear the approval in the first place? Um, I haven't found that myself, uh, working with local officers and having the contacts I have, um, it works quite well, okay. and we ha we've always been very good in terms of, um, well we haven't had any bio beds being turned down. That's great, and in terms of just to make sure, because there will be people across the UK looking at this, the grants are only available in certain areas, is that right? That is correct, yeah, there's 50 catchments across the country uh, where the grant scheme is operated, um, so it doesn't cover the whole country unfortunately, but in those catchments where it is is actually current. I, I urge farmers to make the most of this grant scheme as it is and it is a very good incentive. Yeah. And talk to your catchment officer first. I and suspect. definitely talk to your catchment officer first who might have uh, might be able to help uh, go to some of the contacts and help you through the advice and all the different um, uh, kind of advice leaflets and kind of help them steer them in the right direction. That's great. Okay thank you Roy. Thank you Patrick.